What's going on guys? This is Empty Box, and I aim to make you a competent sim racer. In this video I want to help get your view situation sorted with the lovely topic that is field of view, camera positioning and angles, and the untruth of the mythical sense of speed. First off, we're using the cockpit view. This is sim racing after all, we're simulating racing, so you drive a real car from a cockpit, so therefore you should drive the virtual car from the cockpit, that's kind of like the whole point. And I think that using any other view is just kind of like taking the easy way out. And quite frankly, once you do get adjusted to using the cockpit view, it's a total non-issue. So just get used to it. Yes, it may be an adjustment, but use the cockpit view. Trust me. Secondly, I'm a PC player. I don't have any of the recent console heavy hitters like the Gran Turismo or Forza series. I know some of you guys, you know, from that side of thing watch these types of videos. But I'm told that uh, you guys are still lacking the proper field of view options over there, which is a darn shame. I don't know how anything calling itself the real driving simulator can go ahead and offer a horrendous cockpit view. I am sorry. I apologize. You should probably beg them to actually fix this travesty. But all of this would apply over there if they were to eventually implement those options. And lastly, if you are running in virtual reality, this is already taken care of you because all the details are already known so the developers can pre-program the settings for you. So let's get into the meat here and talk about field of view and positioning. We'll save the sense of speed bit for the end here. We'll answer the why first, and that is the why does the field of view matter and why is there so much talk about something in sim racing that in most any other game is largely a preference setting and something nobody really thinks twice about. Believe it or not, there is only one truly technically mathematically correct field of view for your individual seating and display position. Now this doesn't mean you are strictly forbidden from using anything else and if you dare use something else, the sim racing police are going to come get you in the middle of the night. But the closer to the correct field of view that you can get, providing it's reasonable, we'll come back to that a little bit later, the better. A correct field of view will help you be better able to judge distance, speed, car movements, and other things, which means that basically you're going to be more in control, more consistent, and better to able to race cleanly. Now this isn't to say that it's not possible to do this with a totally hosed field of view, but why make things more difficult than need be? Your brain already is used to seeing these distances in the real world, so you might as well display these distances in the virtual world even if the displays are entirely different. Your eyes care, but your brain does not. It may be a significant adjustment to move to a more realistic, more correct field of view from where you are currently if you're not already doing this, but I believe in the long run it will pay dividends. I'm not saying this is a miracle fix-all for horrible driving, but I know I am not alone in saying it's surprising how much a simple field of view fix can change your game. So how the heck does this work? Let's take a look at an overhead shot of a car. From above, this is what we'd call a horizontal field of view. How many degrees you can see to the left and right of center totaled. So let's rough in some info about our human eyes first. Without moving our eyes, we can see roughly 180 degrees to left to right. It all varies from person to person, but it's simple and it works well enough for our purposes. Now a lot of that is monocular vision. Only one eye can see at the very peripherals, so let's plop, plop down the roughly 115 degrees both of our eyes can see. Two of the eyes seeing the same thing means that we are much better at detecting depth and distance. It basically works the exact same as a virtual reality headset. In that slice, our vision quality still changes. Within about 60 degrees, it's generally said that we have reasonably good vision in terms of color and shape recognition. Even beyond that, however, the actual area where our vision is at its best is only a paltry 5 degrees roughly. Now how does it relate to us as sim racers? We want to take a distortion-free slice out of the vision that we would have in the real world. Remember, the in-game eyes are actually a camera, and we want to sync up what the camera is displaying with what our physical eyes would be seeing. To do this, we need to know what size our display is and how close or far our real eyes are from it. We can then put the pieces together to calculate what our field of view is mathematically, technically, what the camera should display. For demonstration purposes, I've now plopped down two individual 27-inch monitors for demonstration. One is 27 inches away from our eyes, and the other one is 13 and a half inches from our eyes in this visual. If we were to have a triple screen setup, we'd go ahead and add in those other displays, both accounting for their size as well as the angle of the side monitors to the center monitors. If we go above or below the correct field of view, 
we would be introducing distortion. In simple terms, we'd be warping or stretching the incorrect in-game field of view to match the correct field of view you will always see in the real world with your physical hardware. The correct in-game field of view is the same field of view that your display takes up when you're looking at it in the real world. This should make it obvious that one thing in particular is the closer you are to your display, the higher your field of view will be. So if possible, bring your display as close as reasonable while racing. This is also how the virtual reality headsets work, how they're able to cram a 110 degree field of view inside of a headset, because it's a tiny little screen, but it's right up next to your face. There's also one other way to measure field of view, and that's called vertical field of view. Viewed from the side, this is how many degrees you can see up and down with the eyes again facing forward. The angles, of course, are different, but the concept is exactly the same. Here's another graphic from this angle demonstrating the differences. There isn't a difference that matters for actual gameplay purposes. Neither one is better, it's just a different way of measuring. Which system used depends on the game you are playing. iRacing and Project Cars, as well as many popular non-sim racing games, use the horizontal field of view calculation, while Assetto Corsa, Automobilista, R-Factor 1 and 2, among others, use the vertical field of view calculation. Then there are also titles like Race Room Racing Experience, which take a certain field of view that's locked away within the game, and then you change a multiplier in the menus to get the desired setting. Personally, I must say I really dislike those approaches, but they're out there for some reason. For future reference, as time goes on and more titles are released, a vertical field of view will always be smaller than a horizontal field of view. If you are unsure which your game is using, try out your known field of view that you already know and have calculated, and if it just doesn't look right, it's probably measured the other way. The differences will be very obvious. In the description, you can find a field of view calculator that's been tailor-made for sim racing. Hats off to that guy, he's the real MVP here. I suggest you use that site because it's very handy and it makes everything very easy to get it calculated. If you are using iRacing, you'll notice that it's not listed on that site. That is because iRacing has their own built-in field of view calculator within the options menu. They both work the same way. You enter in the variables of your screen size and your distance to the screen and then they calculate the field of view and then you basically feed that number into the game. And remember, as long as you haven't substantially changed your positioning or your hardware or anything like that, your field of view should remain unchanged once set, because there's no reason to change it. I know there's people who do this, but do not change your field of view on a per car basis. This basically means that you're relearning everything, and if you jump into one car, the track looks entirely different, and if you go to another car, it looks different again, and how are you ever going to actually establish any sort of consistency when you're playing like that. As for seat positioning, this is one a lot of people get confused on for some reason, but it's actually really simple. I think a lot of people just tend to overthink it. Moving your seat in game may appear to zoom things in, which may appear to replicate a lower field of view so they're the same, right? But you are simply moving the camera's position around. The field of view is unaffected by the position of the camera. You want to position your in-game camera to best match your preferences as well as your physical wheel's positioning in your eye's viewpoint. Again, cannot stress this enough, moving the camera, moving the seat position in-game is simply moving the camera's position. It has nothing to do with field of view, and those two are entirely different and should not be thought of as the same. So let's finally touch on the quote-unquote reasonable part I mentioned earlier. If your setup does not allow you to get a reasonable field of view, say you are, you are playing on a TV across the room, then this doesn't really matter. It's not necessarily applicable because you just can't race that way. Personally, I would view the absolute minimum reasonable field of view would be 45 degrees horizontal, which converts out to 27 degrees vertical on a 16 by 9 standard widescreen display. And while it may make your setup incorrect, to add a few degrees, I'd say as much as five degrees horizontal or three vertical, it won't hurt you too much. So if you feel like you need a little bit of help, a little bit more just to be able to see and feel a little bit more confident, go ahead and take it, but don't get too crazy with it because otherwise you're just gonna throw the benefits away. Now, of course, there are two perceived downsides to a realistic field of view, and I wanna go ahead and address them both. The first complaint that I always hear is that people don't feel safe racing with a lower field of view because you can't see as much around you, so that's scary. And I can just say this, that's not even close to true. You can race just as well, and as a low field of view single screen racer for years and years before making the jump into virtual reality, 
I say it's absolute bunk and there's more than enough proof on this channel to prove that you can race in close quarters on a low field of view single screen. It's very possible, very doable, and it's not that difficult. With the benefit of improved distance judgment through the correct field of view, your brain will be better equipped to place that car in space even though you can't see them because you will know what distance is. You know, you'll have a better grounding in that. When you combine that with the audio sound effects, you will develop a strong spatial awareness and, well, it'll be a moot point. Let's look at this another way, though, by taking a look at the cockpit view. And we're going to compare two field of views here, 47 degrees horizontal and 90 degrees horizontal. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the overhead view once again. Most people would be thrilled to have a 90 degree field of view and not many would complain that it's too low. But what is the real advantage here? You gain some vision to the right side of the car and some to the left, but most of the vision to the left is already taken up by the A pillar anyways. As for racing, there is actually surprisingly little practical advantage in wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing scenarios as you should very well know there is a car alongside by the time it is drawn in either camera angle. It's only once you reach the realm of triple screens and virtual reality where a higher field of view provides actual meaningful benefits. And remember how we mentioned the eyes can only see so much without turning? That's why triple screens and virtual reality work so well for racing sims. You just look to see how close someone is. This can easily be somewhat accomplished at a lower field of view on a single screen by binding your glance left and right buttons to your steering wheel and getting used to using them. Believe me, once you get used to it, you will find that racing with a lower field of view even on a single screen is not nearly as scary as it once might have seemed. So let's move to the second thing that I often hear, and that is the sense of speed. And I'm just going to say it right now, the sense of speed is a lie. What you see at a lower field of view is exactly how it would appear if you were limited to such a small viewport in the real world. That's the whole point. Barring a disability, this isn't how you see the world for real, which leads people to claim that low field of views feel so slow. The truth is, sense of speed is really created by three things working together. Your peripheral vision, the closeness of the surroundings, and the eye, or in our case for sim racing game purposes, camera movement. Just think in your head right now. Imagine driving down a two-lane highway at 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour in an empty, wide-open, flat area. This will feel positively slow as can be. Now drive down the same road at the same speed in the same location, but now it's actually bumpy gravel. Now imagine driving through the middle of a large city on the same size two-lane road at the same speed. It's going to feel like absolute warp speed compared to the highway because you now have the buildings passing by. Therefore, it's important to have a proper field of view to get a proper sense of speed because sense of speed varies tremendously depending on the surroundings. Then there is also camera movement. How much bumps, g-forces, buffeting, and the like apply to the camera settings. This is why I mentioned that bumpy gravel road. These are where you should aim to dial in your sense of speed if you find that it feels too slow. More movement, particularly the g-forces and buffeting effects, will appear to make everything feel faster as there will be more chaos happening on screen, although that can obviously have its downsides. There are also visual effects such as motion blurs or cockpit blurs which can create more sense of speed even at correct field of views if you would like. Personally I'm not a huge fan but for me if it came down to a correct field of view with motion blur applied or an incorrect field of view without it, I'm taking the motion blur. So wrapping it up, there is actually a right way and a wrong way to set up your camera options. Now, how you choose to take this advice is your own thing and not mine. Hopefully you liked it, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, you know the drill, this whole YouTube thing. Click that thumbs up button, go ahead and share it with someone who's racing on a totally ridiculous field of view because we must not stop until everyone is educated for the sanity of better sim racing. So anyways, that's that. Hope you guys enjoyed. Bye. Bye.